You know, it's kind of weird talking on a podcast when you don't have anybody here with you to talk back and forth, but uh, we work with what we got. So the first thing I'll just talk about is I installed a Waves plugin that I actually owned for like a year. I actually got it for free when they had some sort of promotion. What I'm going to say might be a little bit controversial in the audio world, but I honestly don't buy into the hype of Waves plugins. I'm not saying they're bad plugins by any means. I'm just saying there's a lot of hype around Waves plugins that I don't think they deserve. Once again, they're fine plugins. You know, there's nothing wrong with them. But let me just tell you about like when I started out, of course, I knew nothing about recording and audio plugins, obviously. So when you look around the internet, what are you going to see? You're going to see, oh man, you got to buy Waves plugins. If you don't have Waves plugins, then you're nothing. You're not a pro. You can't, you know, you can't make any music that's worth anything if you don't have Waves plugins. And that's just simply not true. You know, it's the same thing around the same sort of mystique and mystery that surrounds audio cables, which again is usually complete BS. As long as you have a good quality cable, you're not going to tell a difference. Um, like monster cables. And I'm a monster cable owner and I actually like monster cables, but there's a lot of mystique around them. Like, oh man, I got this new monster cable and everything all of a sudden sounds better. No, it, no, it doesn't. <laughs> what you're suffering from is called confirmation bias. And that's a real thing. When you've gone out and you've spent a hundred dollars on a cable that you could have just spent 20 bucks on a good quality cable, of course, you're going to say, well, this one is better because I spent my money. So therefore this cable is better. Now, obviously, you know, there are other reasons to buy monster cables or waves plugins. It's not really fair that I'm picking on them because I actually own their products and I actually like their products. I'm just talking about the hype that surrounds them. Like for instance, you may want to buy monster cables because you're a musician, you travel around a lot. And the great thing about monster cables is, you know, if they fail, you can always take them into any guitar center or any place that has monster cables. Just, just hand them the bad one. You'll get a new one to replace it. And you know what? Back on your way, back to some crappy bar, play another gig, earn 20 bucks enough for gas to get to the next show. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you know, there's really nothing wrong with waves plugins. You know, they've been actually been having a lot of good sales lately and uh, they're fine plugins. I'm just talking about the hype that surrounds them. There's plenty of plugins out there that are free, that sound good, that well, some people are going to say, oh, well, you didn't pay however much for this plugin, so therefore it's crap. You know, that's just not true. And, you know, I'm basically saying all of that to get down to a point. You can't let other people dictate when you're going to start creating something. And I see a lot of this on message boards and around the internet and uh, people that say, oh, my mix isn't good enough because I can't afford you know, such and such plugin. And it's, it's not just Waves plugin, it's plenty of other plugins that have all kind of hype. If you're new to music, or even if you're not, don't buy into the hype and the magic and the mystique because it doesn't exist. It's not there. It's nothing more than hard work that's going to get you somewhere in this field, you know, and whatever, whatever that is, any sort of creative field, you're going to have to just go for it. You're going to have to stop psyching yourself out and letting other people tell you what you must have. Now, obviously, maybe I sound like a hypocrite because I've talked about a bunch of must-have plugins. Obviously, that applies to me, must-have plugins. You know, if you don't agree they're must-have, well, whatever, that's that's great. Just use the plugins that you like. But my point really is, you know, don't make an excuse to not create something new. When you have the feeling that you want to create something new. Don't use an excuse of, I don't have this, I don't have that. You know, I don't have this audio equipment. I, I don't have Pro Tools. All I have is Reaper. You know what? Use what you have now. If you just have a cell phone, use the cell phone to record your ideas now because that is going to make you better at audio production than if you just sit around waiting for everything to be handed to you on a silver platter. And I got to tell you, that's not going to happen. Obviously, there are people who get to places where they shouldn't be, quote unquote, because they know somebody or, or whatever. And then there's those people that are just gifted. And you know, there's nothing you can do about that. If you're like me, you're just going to have to work. And that's the only magic there is. There's no magic. There's no mystery to creating a song, creating something new, creating a video, you know, whatever you want to do, you're just going to have to work at it. And it really just you know bums me out when you see all these people that say, oh, I have this great idea for a song or 
for a video or whatever, and they don't actually do anything because honestly, they're too afraid of failing. And if you're just too afraid to be called names or to be told that, you know, whatever you made sucks, then you just don't have the balls to do it. And you basically just need to grow a pair and do it. Now, maybe what you create will suck. That's possible. I've been part of many, <laughs> many songs that suck. I mean, really suck playing with bands and everything. Obviously, we think, oh, man, this is the greatest thing ever. So, of course, you can have, again, confirmation bias of your own work thinking, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. But at least we tried. And that's going to be the important thing for you. You know, you're never going to look back and say, oh, well, at least I didn't try to make this song. <laughs> because that's not going to matter. You're going to have to try and you're going to fail. And that's going to make you a better musician, a better video maker, a better artist overall. You can't let other people or your fear of what other people are going to think of your art keep you from making it. You've got to just go for it and put it out there. And if it fails, well, you know what? It fails and you've learned something new. So, you know, apply it or don't apply it. If it's complete BS, don't apply it and just go on. There's plenty of people out there who themselves are just too afraid to put something out there. So instead, they'll go around to different videos or online internet forums and say, oh, this sucks, that sucks. But then they never do anything about it themselves to say, oh, well, this is how it should have been done. And I'm going to show how it should have been done because they just, you know, they just don't have the balls to do it. And if you're going to put yourself out there making music, making videos on YouTube, uh, you know, any sort of creative thing, you're going to be criticized and you're probably going to be criticized a lot. And that is is actually what you want. If you can make somebody talk about you, whether it's good or bad, in the end, it's going to be good for you as long as you don't take it to heart because most people aren't going to talk like that, you know, to your face. They're just saying it behind the protection of the internet. And, you know, that's totally fine. I get negative comments all the time and they don't affect me at all. I actually <laughs> actually kind of like getting <laughs> actually kind of like getting them because a lot of them are really funny. Well, you know, what people come up with to slam you with and you know, I don't get offended by anything, so I always think it's funny when somebody takes time out of, their, <laughs> out of their day to slam me on something I've put up. It's just basically don't let your fear of being told you're wrong stop you from creating something that could be great and it could be complete crap. It could be either one, but you've got to at least try and you just don't want that fear of, you know, being called a name. Oh no, somebody called me a name. Who cares? If you've got something to create, just go out and do it. Okay, and move on to something else now. Uh, PV released an update to Revolver. We're up to version 4 now. And a really cool thing is, this is actually free. It, it reminds me a lot of the IK Multimedia Amplitude uh, way that they're doing things with the custom shop and buying you know, certain models, uh, just what you want. And you can do this now in PV Revolvers. So you know, head over to PV.com and... Download the free version of Revolver 4. It comes with a couple um, products already in there that you can use. And you can, of course, demo some of the other amp models and cab models. And then just buy what you want. Or I think they even have a sale right now for like 99 bucks for, I think, the whole thing. Haven't really dug in too deep in that. You know, it's always great to have more tools in the old toolbox. So since my last podcast, I was talking about creating more 11 rack rigs. But I've actually gotten stuck with this melody in my head this like sad melancholy sort of melody that I've just been working with all week and I haven't been able to work on any 11 rack rigs yet um, I'll just play a little piece of it here so obviously this is just an outline these are just you know chords just a rough structure and the drums I'm just tapping away at the keyboard to get some sort of a, a framework there and obviously it's out of time, so let me take the drums out of this. So that's sort of the melody that's just been stuck in my head for the past week that I've been, you know, trying to get out. And it's, you know, it's kind of weird how songs come together, how they start out. 
But, you know, they sort of start out as these really rough ideas that you know, don't sound that great. I mean, what you just heard, it didn't sound great. It sounded okay. You heard a little melody, but it's just, I'm just using a loom here. By the time this thing is done, it's going to have a ton of plugins all across Pro Tools here. I'm going to use some more loom, some more hybrid, maybe some Sample Tank 3. Obviously, i got to fix those drums and get them right in time. That's how a song comes together. It starts out as an idea in your head. Then you have to get that out somehow in some sort of a structure. And it's not always going to come out perfect right at the beginning. Sometimes it does. Sure, sometimes that works. But a lot of times it's just going to be uh, something simple like this, how it starts. And then you just mold it and caress it into different areas. And, and this sort of goes back to what we were talking about before. You've got to start doing something. Don't just sit there and say, well, I have this idea. Let me try to type it out on my keyboard, you know, my MIDI keyboard. And oh, well, that doesn't sound perfect. So I'm just going to stop. <laughs> you can't just stop. You, ha you start small. And then you just build up and that's how you create a song. I mean, there's all kind of tutorials out there for how to create a song and you got to have this, you got to have that. And it can be overwhelming for people just starting out. I'm just telling you that use what you have, the equipment that you have now, and go ahead and start creating your music. Lay it down simple. Get your framework and then massage it from there. You can, once you get your framework up, you can completely change everything. But getting the framework gives you a starting point to say, okay, let me do this, let me do that, let me try this, let me try that, so on and so forth, and before long, you'll be done. The important thing is that you just keep at it. If you have an idea for a song, if you've never made a song, this is how you start. Lay down a simple idea and build from there. On the last podcast, I don't think I mentioned that Pro Tools has been updated to 11.2.1, .1. so if you are a Pro Tools user and you have not updated yet, go ahead and update. There's some bug fixes in there that uh, are helpful. Also, if you were an early adapter to Sample Tank 3, it was updated a couple weeks ago to 3.0.1. That actually helped me to be able to get through my problem of not being able to launch Sample Tank 3 in standalone on Windows 8.1. For some reason, the 3.0.0 version, it you know, I go to launch it and it, it would just never come up. With the 3.0.1 update, it comes up just fine. It works just fine. Standalone as well as in my doll of choice which is pro tools so some other videos i've put up this week or last week which sort of depends when i post this podcast but the uh eureka sound rack legs and rack arms that's a pretty cool video and it's a uh, pretty cool solution from eureka sound so check out that video you know the rack arms rack legs with the rack legs you can pop those on a 2u case that's 19 inches or less in length you pop those on the case and you can stand that there with your 11 rack or whatever sort of 2U unit you have in it, such as you know, an Axe FX maybe or Line 6 Pod, one of the rack mounts obviously. You can uh, pop those on your rack mount case, set it down on stage. I'd set it on a carpet or something to you know just keep it from moving and then it's nice down out of the way. It's not sitting up on a cabinet or something where it can get knocked off and fall to the floor and it can also be useful for studio use if you don't like to keep things in a regular rack you can uh, move that closer to you maybe you have it since it sits down on the floor and maybe you're going to sit down and play guitar that it's actually like the perfect height for that also the rack arms if you happen to not have a 2u case with the rack arms you can sort of emulate having that 2u case and still have it standing there without the actual case surrounding it and they're actually pretty cheap for what they are they're I mean they're high quality a high quality build now, it's not some slinky pieces of metal that's just going to bend uh, thick heavy metal for the rack arms and good sturdy legs with the uh, rack legs so definitely go check those out also of course the Eureka Prom I've done several videos on that but if you have a Behringer FCB 1010 check out the Eureka Prom it's already pre-programmed with tons of modes for pretty much every guitar effects box out there really cool solution from Eureka Sound you know those are great guys over there they're really innovative they're real dudes who make real products, real innovative products for working musicians, and they price them right. They're not, you know, sky high prices where you're paying for more of a name than an actual product. These are actually good products from good people. So definitely check them out at Eureka Sound. They have more than what I've mentioned here. They have all kinds of different products. So go check them out at EurekaSound.com. And I believe that's it. I think I'll actually work on 11 rack presets now. You know, now that I've got that melody sort of that structure down, I can actually 
move on with something else and uh, hopefully get on those 11 rack presets and make something pretty cool and as always if you have the 11 rack and you have been checked out all the presets available on the 11 rack users blog you can go there they're all free i like to make sure you know everything is free for everybody that way everybody has access to it so absolutely free you can head over to the blog site which i'll link in the description so if you want all of the something like 3,000 rigs or so i've done you can get all those for free just head down to the description and click the link